Sebastian Stan. Good to see you, buddy. You too, man. You too. Um, there are a few films this year at the Toronto Film Festival that like have been on everybody's radar. I know there's been like just a lot of excitement around, and one was right. certainly I, Tanya. I got a chance to see it last night. Um, for those that don't know, it is the story of Tanya Harding and Jeff Galuli and Nancy right. Kerrigan, that insanity that happened, what, 20 mm, plus years ago? Yeah, it was 94. Three or ninety-four, right. or something like that. Yeah. So, talk to me a little bit about um, when you heard about the project, um, your awareness of the true story, and just well, I'm, I've always been a very avid sort of thirty for thirty fan. So mm -hmm. I, I was, I was actually, I think I had seen the thirty for thirty that was really good with her, Price of Gold, and then it was right around, kind of around maybe a year ago, around this time that the script came my way, and. You know, I don't know if anybody really realizes it's I, Tanya, because it's after I, Claudius. Right. But you've, yeah, you probably did. I don't know if I read a book or two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it may, you know, it was so, so from the title, you kind of. There's a take like, on it. It's not yeah. a straight ahead. It's sort of, it, it is, and it, and, and it was very funny, and it was, it was actually really funny to me. I, I just, the fact that it was, tr you know, a true story was kind of bizarre and, and, and sort of, um, you know, it had it had all these layers to it, but um, and when you get the script and you see it written by uh, Stephen Rogers, are you like, oh, this is meant to be? <laughs> no, Obviously, I know <laughs> what you're thinking, but like, I'm like, it's so because I've seen fans talk about that. I'm like, I can't escape it. <laughs> I'm either playing a character named Chris, right. or or there's or it's something written by Stephen Rogers. You're um, not asking your agents like, find me the next great script by Nick Fury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's got something in the hopper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wouldn't be, uh, you know. I should just use that as an alias or something. You that should. Would, that you would check at the work. hotels. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, very strange. So talk to me a little bit about. Um, I mean, the two lead performances are uh, exceptionally yours and, and Margot's, and truly trans yeah. transformational. We've never seen you as this kind of guy before. Um, right. Jeff has quite a look, yeah. you could say, in terms of wardrobe, in terms of facial hair. Yeah. Does that do like ninety percent of the job? Uh, it's, does that help well, you? Well, I'm telling. Have you had Have you had a mustache? No, have you ever worn no, a mustache? No, no. Only in, like for in 20, 20 seconds, <laughs> like in front of the mirror, and then I shave it off. A mustache in 2016, which is when it, I had it, was was definitely entertaining, <laughs> to say the least. Like when you go to Whole Foods, and actually at Whole Foods, you're kind of accepted because you know you're like. They're buying organic food, right. but anyway. Um, <laughs> he passes a hipster a little bit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like I was like, do I start dressing? You know, do I try to make it work for myself? <laughs> but we were kind of trying to bring it back. Actually, the <clears throat> the real Jeff emailed me a picture of myself that I had posted on um, Instagram, and he was like, you know what? You may you may actually make the Galuli stash look cool or something. <laughs> so I was like, all right, if I got his approval. Then I'm, then I'm good. What, you know? what did friends and family make of it? Did it affect your personal life, walking around for months with that kind of Yeah, stash? well, yeah, it was an isolating experience. <laughs> it was an isolating time <laughs> in my life. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, I don't know. I mean, I, that's kind of the beauty of what we do is, is, you know, I think anytime you have an opportunity to physically do something to alter yeah. your look or your persona, it, it just, it helps you know, break the barrier of how you see yourself. I mean, you wake up in the mirror and you gotta look at yourself, right? So yeah. it just changes everything. And I, I don't even know if a lot of people realize, but it was the contacts I was wearing, because he's got dark eyes. That that really kind of did it for me. It was really right. weird to have, you know, change your eye color. I don't know if you I've done never it. done that, yeah, you yeah. Know, on a typical Friday night. <laughs> I'm gonna try green <laughs> just today. out there in Lower East Village, <laughs> Manhattan. Um, but yeah, try and night. see what happens. <laughs> Okay, thanks, thanks for the rest. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's been impressive to me to see the, kind of the way you've steered your career, especially in the wake of like the crazy opportunity that, that's been the Marvel movies. Because, I mean, I'm sure you, I don't know if you had concerns or not. I mean, all these actors did one that you sign on for a role like that, whether it's gonna limit you. If anything, I feel like it's, it's enabled you to choose quirkier, odder, interesting, it, more interesting projects it, like this. No, 100%, it absolutely changed my life. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I tell Kev Kevin Feige that, every time I see him. I mean, I just, I wouldn't have had these, the opportunities yeah. uh, had it not been for Marvel. So there's always, uh, you know, a real soft spot. And I mean, it just, it's a, I'm sure the Game of Thrones people are all over this, but you're, you're spending years together. You're growing right. older together. You're experiencing things together. And so there's a nostalgic element to it also. And, and 
it's also sometimes scary because you don't know where your future there might be right. <laughs> from time to time. But um, yeah, it's been a it's been a very gratifying thing to come back to. Yeah, and and of course you 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 do your best to sort of find something that kind of pushes you in a different way in between and. So sort of this was a good vehicle for that. Did you feel like kind of like you're out on a limb when you're on set for something like this? Or do you kind of feel like, I mean, what Allison does in the film is amazing, what Margot does. Like everybody's kind of going for it. You have to kind of go to the extreme for these kind of characters. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, we laughed. We, ha we laughed so much on set. I mean, it was, there was the, the scene at the diner with Allison was particularly hard. Some of it was improvised and she was improvising it. And there's genuine reactions, I mean, that we're having that ended up on screen and right. that's sort of like the magic that you kind of hope for um, and then there were times with with Margo where we were sort of looking at each other going like hey are you okay like did mm -hmm. you didn't you know I didn't really hit you right I mean we didn't right you know we're and then she's like no we're very you know let's do this let's go for it I think I think you need to have a major level of trust yeah with, especially when you're working on something that's pushing you in this this kind of way. I mean, you reference like the relationship is tumultuous to say the least, and like it, it and it, it's an interesting film that's interesting balance to achieve for a film that is very comedic. That right. like it's it's an abusive relationship, and Jeff does some pretty despicable things. But throughout. you know, but the thing is, if you got to remember, like um, we've seen this kind of thing a lot. I mean, um, somebody actually referred to it last night to me. They're like, oh, you know, they're just Sid and Nancy, or there's that great documentary. I can't believe they haven't made a movie of it yet. The crazy love, you oh know, yeah, about yeah, the I guy that, that the threw acid in her yeah, face, yeah, yeah. And she got blind, yep. and then they ended up together. Look, I mean, it's it's unconventional, and it's it's out there, and it's certainly not our life, right. um, we hope. And and but I think if you see the movie, you're gonna understand that there's there was something about it that made sense, as right. crazy as it was, and and you know it was probably a codependent relationship, and it had a lot of issues, but they're sort of like well matched. I mean, it's just, it's kind of crazy. Once you do the research and you really look at it, yeah. you know. You, you mentioned correspondence with Jeff. Was that something that early on you, you made contact with him? I mean, I had to, yeah. I, well, Stephen uh, Rogers, are, the screenwriter, had contact with him and he had a few hours of interview that he had him on tape for and mm -hmm. that was really helpful because I, could, I couldn't really, with the exception of like three little things on YouTube, I, c I couldn't really find a lot of footage of, of right. him and, and there's not a lot of interviews of him talking about <coughs> what happened. There are out there if you really look for them but, you know, s except for Steven had this one-on-one -on -one and I listened to that over and over again, I listened to it over and over again and then finally uh, I was like, listen, I'm going to call him, I feel like I should right. meet him because... Um, you just, I think, you know, if you're playing someone that lived or existed, I, I, regardless of the situation, you gotta... At least try. Yeah, you, yeah. you have to know, because you feel that responsibility sure. for them. Um, so, so yeah, we went, we sat down, and um, it was... The biggest takeaway, was there one helpful thing about just watching him oh, or hearing yeah. from him? Yeah, no, multiple things. I mean, multiple things. I think... You know, nothing's ever really what you think. I, that's just one, you know, you read a lot of stuff, you see you see things online, you know, you see pictures, you see videos, and, and, and you know how it is. It's, people are never exactly the way you think. I mean, it, you know, when they, when the, in the moment when they feel comfortable and they reveal themselves to you, like, like all of us, I think, in our comfortable environments, there's another piece there, you know, that's honest, mm -hmm. and we don't, and so, yeah, I, I felt like I got to know him a little bit, and um, you know, that was the least I could do, I, but, I, but it was, that was my job. Um, you mentioned when you sat down, you've been spending a lot of time in Atlanta. So how's it been yeah. going? Um, obviously, two films back to back that right. are the most ambitious probably films maybe ever made, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. At least, um, has it felt like a different kind of a, a thing? I mean, Civil War, the films you've done have been epic in nature, but does this feel like a whole different level? Yeah, I mean, I think um, y it certainly is the biggest culmination of anything and everything that they've done so far I mean I, I you know it, it, it's it's just gonna be bigger and crazier than anything I mean the footage that that I saw at uh, the Disney d23 was just mind-blowing um, apparently I, I didn't get a chance to see it but there's some stuff of you and Black Panther in there is it fun to kind of mix it up with some new characters like yeah well that was the, that was the feeling on set I mean you get to set and you know it's like you know, there's like Hemsworth is just walking around, and then and then there's you know, 
I guess that's the Doctor Strange cape. And, you know, <laughs> it's almost like carrying Rocket Raccoon. It's just all these people that you've seen in different movies. And I think that was my biggest question was kind of how does everyone interact with each other? Yeah. It's like my guy is just, st you know, figuring out, as usual, figuring out where he <laughs> where he's at. And then next thing you know, there's like a talking raccoon in there. Yeah, <laughs> so you're like, wait a minute. I thought I had so it figured out. Now it got a little more complicated. But that's, you know, one of the things that I think the Russos um, – and the writers, uh, obviously, uh, Christopher uh, McFeely, and, and, and it's just, they, um, they've done so well, it's just find that tone and that, that balance between right. humor and at the same time keeping you engaged and, and not sacrificing any of the characters' true sort of identities. Because yeah. you know? everybody's sort of, an, if you think about it, Every movie s has its own thing, sure. but in this one, they all kind of have to come together. So, have you read the full scripts for both of the films? No, no, I, I <laughs> no, I cast? only read, I only read. Who gets to read the entire script? Downey does probably. That jerk. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I only read uh, the little, you know, whatever they gave me on the day, I and mean, it's usually like a day-to-day -day thing. I, I certainly don't know what I have to do next but really? so it's like literally like the day or the day before you don't know like a week or two ahead of time what you're doing yeah no not really wow. no no and it's <laughs> uh but look i think there's a l tremendous amount of trust sure. there uh, and also they th i mean especially with the russos i feel like we kind of grew together mm -hmm. i mean that was definitely the case for me sure. since they came in the last two movies and so i feel like they can kind of guess my next move and I can almost sort of guess like a little bit of the next move with them yeah. and so it's not like I'm going to turn up on the day and not know what the hell I'm doing you know yeah. um, that's one of the good things about kind of working with the same people over and over again and, and without revealing anything with us I know we've got a long way to go are you surprised excited by sort of like the arc for Bucky and for for Cap I mean it seems like you know a lot of people like me and conjecture is that like at some point that shield is gonna maybe change hands it's, it's just speculation it. man I mean there's no if I was a betting man should I put my money on, on <laughs> you holding that shield at some point I honestly have no idea like I, I really don't know what I would say to somebody uh, <laughs> who would ask me that quite like I, I, I did I just asked you but I know but your money is still you know I, I don't know if I, I, I don't know. I, um, if you did you know, know, would you say, I don't know? We just, we just got to all survive this war, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's questionable. Okay. You know. And what's coming up after? I, I feel a lot like that Jon Snow character. You know, like, <laughs> John, you remember Battle Sebastian of the Bastards? Sebastian Stan knows nothing? Battle of the Bastards, first of all, was the be <laughs> one of the best episodes. I've never watched it. Oh my God! What are you talking? Can we still go back to the? Can How are you making it this far? I know. Would you watch it again with me? Like no, start from the I would love to, but you have to have interviewed them, right? Yeah, I mean, you've and seen it's them. embarrassing and it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do? They just and look at me. Of course, I should have watched Game of Thrones. No, it's so. I mean, it's so crazy that it's just changed so much of like I feel like storytelling. But you know, for anyone that knows out there, when when there's that shot of Jon Snow in the. Like from the back, as the horses are charging at him, and he's just standing there. That's kind of how I feel when right. I get set sometimes. I'm like, will I make the will I make the stampede or not? <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what's uh, coming up after you're done with this last bit of epicness on? on I, I yeah, I'm not Marvel? sure. We're you know, there's there's this one um, project that's kind of very close to, to you know, to my heart that I that I'd love to see happen, but it's just it's still in the midst of coming together and hopefully it'll be here it would be in Canada which is excellent wouldn't be too bad excellent we'll yeah. keep doing weird quirky stuff like I <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a great piece uh, of work thank man you, as man. always good to see I you I appreciate it I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you were there